If you have a Windows computer and you want to see if you're ready to install SQL Server, just check out this video. We'll show you all the tips and all the gotchas before you even begin. First of all, you're going to need the SQL Server software. If you're doing this on a home computer, one of two recommended ways is you can get the free limited version of SQL 2012, known as SQL Server Express, from the internet, or you can pay up to about $50 to get your very own SQL Developer Edition shipped to you on a DVD. If you're planning on going far with SQL Server and you want it to do everything you can throw at it, I highly recommend you spend the $50 and get the SQL Developer Edition. For the installs in this video, we'll assume you have the install DVD in hand. How about your system? Do you have the right hardware ready to install SQL Server? And do you have the right software ready to install SQL Server? There are different minimums and recommendations you'll run across, but basically if you have about a half a gig of memory, you're ready for SQL Express, and if you have a gig or more, you're ready for almost any version of SQL 2012. This system has Windows 7 installed. At this point, I'm opening up my box of SQL Server 2012, and I'm going to place it in the DVD drive. The operating system has detected that this DVD was put in, so just click the setup of SQL Server by clicking this link. This little splash screen lets us know that it's working on our request. And now we're presented with a window that has lots of choices. Let's put that in the center. It defaults to the planning section of the window, but what we want to do is the installation. So we're going to click here. Installing can also mean upgrading. And installing might be on your own personal machine or a really powerful cluster server. I'm installing this on a laptop, so I'll click this first link. We get confirmation that our process is working. The Setup Support Rules dialog box is checking to see how compliant our system is with installing SQL 2012. There's no questions to answer on this dialog box, so just click OK. Now everybody has the chance of running the full-blown version of SQL for 120 days for free, which is known as the evaluation version, but I've got the CD key, so I'm going to enter mine here. Just where is the product key? Well, when you open up your box, look inside the inside case right here. It's quite a few keystrokes, so be sure to enter them in correctly and double check, because if you get it wrong, the installation won't proceed. Once you've got it entered in, you can click Next. Here's the End User License Agreement, or as we lovingly call it, the EULA. You can scroll through to read all of the materials and all the agreements that's coming with this software. And once you get to the bottom, if you accept these terms, then click this checkbox and click Next. I'm performing this installation in December of 2012, and by then, the Service Pack 1 for SQL 2012 has come out. With my internet connection, it has detected that I probably want to install SQL 2012 and slip the service pack in at the same time. So just click Next to start the process. On my three-year-old laptop, this took about five minutes, so I'm taking out several of the frames so we can see the next stage without waiting for too long. Are we ready? Well, here's the setup support rules that said everything passed, and there's just a warning that my Windows firewall, I might want to let people in who I want in and keep out people who I don't. Let's just look at that warning and double check that's what it says. Click this link here, and yeah, it basically says, hey, you might want to set the right ports on to only allow in people that you trust. All right, I think I'm going to accept the defaults. Thanks for the warning. I'll click OK, and then click Next. SQL integrates really well with SharePoint, and there are some choices about doing that. Now, none of these books require SharePoint integration, so 
For the sake of these practices, we're going to go ahead and say SQL Server Feature Installation, and we'll pick our own SQL Server features. Now, think of this as like your SQL Server menu. What do you want to have, and what do you want to pay for? Well, you've already paid for it monetarily, but how much do you want your system to process? Well, we only really need the database engine, which is basically going to be SQL Server itself and all the work that it does, but we're also going to want to be able to manage it. So it's good to click the Management Tools, Basic and Complete. Also, it's nice to have the local help available, so it's good to click Document Components. This is the minimum you probably need to be able to go through the Joe's to Bros books on the querying certification. Now you might check other boxes, but keep in mind you'll have more services and more to run. So it's good to only check what you need. You can install more features later. Okay, SQL Server Install is aware of the components you want, and it's ready for you to make the next couple of choices. Click Next. Now here we get to choose what do we want to call this SQL Server. Why do we have to choose that? The name of this machine is Reno. Why isn't the Cerner just going to have the name Reno? Well, you can install SQL many times. Now this is the first time it's being installed. So we'll accept the default instance, click Next, and this will be the Reno SQL Server with no other supplementary names to it. Here we can see there's more than enough space on this system to perform the SQL Server install. We get a big green light. Let's click Next, and let's move on to the next phase of the installation. Now, SQL Server really isn't an application, it's a suite of services. And what name should each service run under? In this case, let's go ahead and take the default names. And the startup types, the defaults are going to be working just fine for where we need to start. So we'll leave them right here. And now, click Next. Now here's something important to know. The person who installs SQL Server may not be the person who's going to be working on or in charge of it. If you're installing it, then you probably want to be in charge of it. Then go ahead and add the current user to specify them as the SQL Server Administrator. We won't go into the data directories or file stream options. So at this point, just click Next. Do you want some of your patterns and preferences and hardships and successes to be reported to Microsoft? If so, click this box. Or you can click Next without checking that box. Now your installation configuration rules are all done. Hit Next. And it will get ready to start the install. But before it does, it's going to summarize everything it asked you and that it's taken notes on of what you want done. Review that. If you think it's correct, then you can hit Install. Now this part will likely take a while, even if you have a fast machine. This laptop is about three years old. Notice the current time. It's about 8.16 in the morning. And this is going to run for quite a while, anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. We're going to let it run, but we're going to take out the frame so you can see what it looks like as it's getting close to being completed. Notice it's 8.51, and I'm almost done. Okay, at this point, the installation is done, and it's letting you know that you must restart the computer to make sure that everything is all complete. You can now close this dialog box, and you can close this SQL Server Installation Center. You don't need it anymore. You've completed your installation, and you don't want to install another instance of SQL. At this point, let's do what we were advised to do and restart the machine so SQL Server will be a complete install. Welcome back from the reboot. Let's check to make sure everything's there. Click Start, go to All Programs, and go to the Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Program Group, and here's SQL Server Management Studio. Click that. And the first time you start SQL Server Management Studio, it's going to take a little longer while it configures.
And since you've added yourself as a SQL Server Administrator during the installation, go ahead and click Connect. You're using your credentials and you have all the rights to SQL Server. At this point, you either probably want to write your own code or you want to run another script from somebody else. You want to start writing your own code, you hit the new query window. And you can start writing your code right here. So SQL's installed, but none of the practice databases are on there. There are some scripts that will help you run these practice databases. You just simply file, open file, and find the script you want. Where are these scripts? What are these scripts called? Which scripts go with which books and which chapters? Well, that's where you should follow the video on setting up your labs from Joe's to Pro's.